Welcome to Thought for January the 25th. Our readings are taken from Genesis chapter 41, Psalm 45 and Matthew chapter 27. And our thought is, you are the most handsome. After reading Psalm 45, we meditated on what makes a person handsome. As the psalm proceeds, it becomes evident that several verses are prophetical of our Lord. Verses 6 and 7 are quoted in Hebrews chapter 1, verses 8 and 9. In the psalm, they read, Your throne, O God, is for ever and ever. The scepter of your kingdom is a scepter of uprightness. You have loved righteousness and hated wickedness. Therefore God, your God, has appointed you with the oil of gladness beyond your companions. This puts the relationship between the Almighty and His Son in its true perspective. But are verses 2 and 3 also prophetical of Jesus? You are the most handsome of the sons of men. Grace is poured upon your lips. Therefore God has blessed you forever. Gird your sword on your thigh, O Mighty One, in your splendor and majesty. This, of course, is in contrast to Isaiah 53, which is so evidently prophetical of the Lord, when it says that he had no form or majesty that we should look to him, and no beauty that we should desire him. Verse 2. The solution to this contrast is twofold. The words that follow in the psalm, you are the most handsome, are grace is poured upon your lips, therefore God has, and this reminds us of Peter's words, let your adorning be the hidden person of the heart, with the imperishable beauty of a meek and quiet spirit, which in God's sight is very precious. 1 Peter 3 and verse 4 God will reward this kind of beauty. We read yesterday how because Joseph was handsome in form and appearance, Genesis 39 verse 6, it proved to be to his disadvantage. But today we saw a contrast when they quickly brought him out of the pit. Chapter 41 and verse 14. And when he had shaved and had new clothes, he was brought before Pharaoh. Exalted to a position of honour before Pharaoh, did not these developments foreshadow in type first the humiliation and then the exaltation of Christ? They also foreshadow the experience of true believers who, especially in certain parts of the world, struggle with opposition against the true way of life in Christ. This opposition is spreading, as even in this country, the the government is more inclined to pass permissive laws and seek to punish those who ignore them and even speak against them. Paul's words to the Romans should be engraved on our minds. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind, that by testing you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable. Chapter 12, verse 2. Our daily reading of God's Word enables us to properly perform the testing and become handsome in mind and be ready for the time when our Lord will gird his sword. Well, thank you once again for joining us for Thought for the Day, where together we can open up the pages of God's Word as we remember they are a lamp to our feet and a light to our path. 